Hello basketball fans, it is Sunday afternoon. I am en route from Bozeman to Billings. Took in the State C Boys Championship game last night. Figured I would hit you guys up with one more dash cam video of the 2012-13 prep basketball season. This might be my last one for a while. Who knows if I'll drop some more of these videos during track and softball this spring. But uh, wanted to kind of do a quick recap on the state championships. We'll start with where I was at the State C Boys Championship that pitted Roy Winifred against Westby Granora. Uh, simply put, Roy Winifred just dominated this game from the outset. I believe they jumped out to a 9-0 lead. I think it took almost, I mean, it took a long time for Westby Granora to even get a shot off. Uh, they did make their first one, so that was, that was a positive for them. But Roy Winifred came out, really established things offensively early. They came out in a 1-3-1 zone. First time Westby Granora had seen that all season long, and it really rattled them. They just could not get any flow offensively whatsoever. And uh, Roy Winifred just pulled away, pulled away, and was dominated. I mean, I think the final score ended up being 62-39. Uh, Chad Cannon then pretty... Uh, he, I thought he played a really smart game. He only had 16 points, which for him is pretty modest. Um, but he did finish with, I think, eight rebounds and six assists. Good all-around game. I thought he played, like I said, a really smart game. Took what was there. Found his teammates. Got a lot of... He had five of those assists in the first half. So he really set the tone, I thought, even though he wasn't scoring a bunch. Um, I'm always impressed by him. I think he was clearly the best player in Class C this year. I think he's one of the top five players in Montana, regardless of class. Um, but as... As we've talked about on Twitter before, I don't think he's going to have enough support to win Gatorade Player of the Year. I still think that's Dane Muller's award to win. Uh, but Cannon then kind of did get that cult following this season with, with the shoes and the socks and the hair, and he showed up at the state championship. All three of the championships they played in this year, district, divisionals, and state, uh, wearing a pretty snazzy white suit. Uh, Kid acknowledges he's the oddball, and he's just a really fun personality and outgoing, and you can see him enjoying the game of basketball, so really fun to watch. Uh, I'm happy for Roy Winifred after, you know, they didn't, they were pretty disappointed in their finishes the last two years getting beat out of divisionals, so to come back their senior years, cap off the undefeated season with a dominant performance in state, 26-0, uh, big, 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 big year for the Outlaws up there, so congrats to them. Uh, obviously last weekend, the belt Lady Huskies won their second consecutive state title on the girls' side of things. So uh, congrats to both those teams on tremendous seasons, and congrats to all, all the teams that were able to play at the state tournaments this weekend. Uh, no small feat getting there, and you know even if the team lost out in two games, it's still uh, quite an accomplishment just to get to the state tournament, especially you know I think at Class C where you're fighting with almost 100 schools to get there. So um, no reason to hang your head if you didn't win a state title. Lots of Lots of successful seasons out there, so I wanted to just kind of throw out a congrats to all the teams this season. Um, uh, let's see, uh, that was Class C. Let's move on to Class B. The State B was down in Butte. Sounds like those guys had a really entertaining boys game between Malta and Wolf Point. Uh, like I said yesterday, you can never count out the Northern B. Northern B is just dominant. They've won a ton of state titles. They've played for a ton of state titles. Um, this year was an all-Northern B final with those two teams. Malta and Wolf Point going to triple overtime. Uh, it sounded like there was a lot of big plays that allowed this game or kept this game going. And there was also some mistakes, you know, some un untimely turnovers or offensive fouls or, or traveling or something like that that allowed maybe set the stage up for some of those big plays. And Malta eventually prevailed 66-62. They are back-to-back -back champions in Class B. And then on the girls' side, it was Fairfield and Townsend, as we all wanted and expected. Uh, the matchup probably didn't live up to the billing once J.C. Thompson uh, for Townsend did not get to play after in, suffering an injury earlier in the tournament. Uh, it would have been nice to see a full-strength Townsend go up against Fairfield. Fairfield was just a little too much for them. They jumped out to a big lead at halftime, like 22-6, to six, I think I saw on Twitter. And then... Uh, Townsend did make it a game, though. Uh, it was 33-25 at one point before Fairfield kind of went on another run to close it out, winning 78 consecutive games. That's three 26-0 seasons in a row, three titles. Quite a run for them. Uh, we'll definitely, in my opinion, I think we'll see that streak continue next year. Wouldn't surprise me at all if we get to see another 
26-0 season out of the Eagles with Jill Barta coming back. Probably the most dominant player, dominant girls basketball player in Montana, regardless of class. So uh, Fairfield, congrats to them. Congrats to the Malta boys. Uh, I think we'll definitely see both those teams making some noise again next year. They've got some pretty good programs going on up there. Uh, moving up to Class A, Billings Central played Stevensville and Billings for the Class A type boys title. Uh, Stevensville kind of pulled away there. I think it was 72-59 was the final score. Um, you know, I didn't get to follow much of that game as that was going going on at the same time as a lot of my game. And while I was having technical difficulties there at Brick Reed and Fieldhouse in Bozeman, but. Uh, I was surprised to see Stevensville score 72. Uh, Billing Central is a really good defensive team, and I don't I don't know if 72 is the most points they've given up all season, but it has to be one of the highest totals. Um, but a really, you know, a good season for the Rams. You know, at the beginning of the year, they lost out at Laurel uh, really bad. Uh, Laurel could do pretty much whatever they wanted to do offensively, whatever they wanted to do defensively. The progress that Billing Central made from the beginning of the year to the end of the season really impressive, but as I've been saying all year long, I thought Stevensville was the most talented team in Class A, and they proved it, I think, throughout the tournament. They played two close games early on, beating Browning and then Laurel, and then uh, pulling away from Billing Central in that championship. Um, they're a young team still. Uh, Jesse Sims, a sophomore. Um, you know, Everybody that I've talked to that has seen Stevensville play has been really impressed by that kid, so expect to see Steve I back there again next year. Could definitely see them making another run. Um, and then, uh, so Stevensville first, Billing Central second, and then uh, Laurel took fourth, losing in the consolation game to Columbia Falls, I believe it was. So uh, uh, that's kind of the run down there. The Laurel girls, of course, winning the State A Girls Championship last weekend over Billing Central on those late Jade the Fever free throws. Uh, moving on up to Class AA, a uh, pretty good night for Missoula. Missoula Hellgate boys beat Helena Capital. Missoula Sentinel girls beat Helena Capital. Hellgate, uh, the boys, talking to a few of my colleagues before the tournament, we'd all kind of thought, yeah, they're talented. They they have the potential to be the state championships champions this year. We just thought they might be a little bit young still with Trace Tinkle being only a sophomore that... Uh, our kind of our thought was maybe they won't win it this year, but this will be invaluable experience for them to win a title next year and maybe the year after. So getting the title this year, tremendous, tremendous job by the Knights. Like I said, Tinkle's only a sophomore. They got some other guys out there, some other sophomores that uh, they rely on there. So that's definitely a team that we could see uh, make a run again next year and probably the year after that. I mean, uh, Tinkle. You know, there's a lot of people that I talked to up at that state tournament before I headed down to Bozeman that I think he has the potential to be one of the better offensive players to ever come out of this state. Um, obviously, there's a long way to go. Nobody's nobody's making any proclamations now based on how good he is now, but there is that potential. I mean, when you have that size and that athleticism and that ability and coaches, kid, he's got the smarts, um, and you can see that that there's still a lot of room for growth there and that he knows it and uh, he's definitely one of those kids that I think we're just going to see get better and better over the next couple of years and that's going to make Hellgate a really, really scary team. On the girls' side, I've said Sentinel beat Helena Capital. That's back-to-back -back titles for the Spartans. They've been in three state championships in a row now, uh, winning the last two. Um, last year, you know, obviously they were a great team last year, but I thought DJ Reinhardt kind of overshadowed how good some of the other some of these other players were like Olivia Roberts and Liz Harper and uh, and this year I mean you saw those other players come to the forefront Roberts had a fantastic season I think she's probably one of the girls in the mix for Gatorade player of the year this year and then you know at the state tournament there's some other girls that really stepped up I'm drawing blanks on the names right now but uh, I'd recognize them if I saw them that's for sure um, so congrats to the Spartans on back-to-back -back titles um, Coach Karen Deaton, I think, has done a fantastic job up there. Probably one of the top coaches in girls basketball in the state. So um, the Spartans, I mean, as long as she's there, they're going to be a team to contend with, I think. And they do lose some of these girls that graduate some seniors. So it's going to be a little bit different squad next year. But uh, definitely, definitely a good team this year and worthy of hoisting a state championship. So there's kind of a rundown of the championships, a quick, just the recap. On the boys' side, you have Missoula Hellgate, Stevensville, Malta, and Roy Winifred as the championships champions. On the girls' side, it's Missoula Sentinel, Laurel, Fairfield, and Belt as your championship champions. 
the 2012-13 prep hoop season. That will probably do it for me. I don't know, like I said, I don't know when we'll see another one of these dash cam videos, but I do appreciate you guys logging on to YouTube and watching these, and I appreciate all the interaction on Twitter. It's been a great season, a lot of fun. Um, in three weeks, I'm sure I'll be wishing it was back, but for now, I am excited to uh, get a couple days to catch my breath, relax a little bit, and uh, get prepared for the oncoming spring sports season.